and why gold was important to them. That day, Robert learned that it is not the asset, it is not the asset that makes one rich. It is the information and the intelligence to process that information that makes one rich. Robert says if he can lose money in gold, which is real money, Robert can lose money in anything. That day, Robert vowed to become smarter because the old woman taught Robert that it is information and it is intelligence that makes one rich and not the gold. Now, to put this into a granular detail, how do I buy cash flowing properties? Now, remember, a property, an asset does not make one rich, okay? Asset does not make one rich. It is what? It is the information and the intelligence to process that information. So when you are out there, wherever you are in your market, you would ask yourself, how do I buy cash flowing property? This is where the information and the intelligence would take place. So how do I buy myself? How do I buy cash flowing properties? Number one, market is very important. These are just some of the details that I'm going to be discussing because there's so many things to learn about real estate and one cannot learn it in just a few hours. One, one is market. Second is job growth. Third, right, are we making money? That's the cash flow. Now, I'll talk about the market. Now, market, for example, in your area, the location where you buy your real estate. What is it like? Who are the people there? Can they afford to pay for your houses? Or are you in a location where, you know, you're in a boondock or where you're in a rural, where it's very hard? Yes, you have a nice home, but it's very hard for you to rent that property. That's the market. Now, job, in your neighborhood, do you have uh, employers? Are there a lot of employers? Do you have strong employers that can continuously have employees? Why? Because these employees, these employees, these people will be renting your properties. They're going to be renting your homes. So job is one of the things that I look at. Now, cash flow. How do I buy cash flowing properties? Now, if we remember, we have income. Income could be from, let me go, income. So income from the property. So there's other sources of income aside from the property. So one, we could get it from the rent. Two, right, so this is the land. Two, you can get for parking. Either you can rent it to your tenant or somebody else. Third, you have... This is garbage, garbage, okay? Let's, let's talk about this. But there are, other, there are other sources of income that you can think of. It could be internet, you know, valet trash, valet parking. So rent is one of the sources. This is your number one source of your income. Parking is an additional stream of income, just like garbage. 
Now, when you have a home, you have expenses. Expenses would be mortgage. Okay, when you borrow money from the bank, unless you buy it cash, then you don't have a mortgage. But if you're like me, an investor, I borrow money from the bank. So I have a mortgage. When you have a mortgage, you have a principal pay down and you have an interest pay down. That's one of the expenses. And this is taken out monthly. And rent is also monthly. Whether it be rent, parking, or garbage. Now, second, we have taxes. So these are just the two biggest things that can eat up your income. Mortgage, taxes. These are the property taxes. Hmm. Third, you have your insurance. Now, if you live close to the water, you have, that's water, you are required, especially if you have a mortgage, you are required to get flood coverage, flood insurance. So right now, mortgage is up, taxes, property taxes is up, it's high, and property insurance is also high. And if you have flood insurance, the more that it is high. Now, another cost would be repairs. So you have to factor that in. Repairs of a leaking faucet, right? Hey, Rhea, my, my faucet in my kitchen is leaking. I have to call a contractor every time I send somebody there. I pay, you know, minimum of $150 just to go look at it. And then I have the materials. So aside from that, repairs on if you have an appliance breakdown. So, for example, your refrigerator is broken, right? So sometimes I will look for parts because part is cheaper. I just don't buy a new one. But if it if the part is not available or if the if you cannot fix it, then I would have to buy a new appliance. And that would be another expense there. Next would be like a roof. If you have a roof leak, that's another expense there. Now, if you have drywall, because why? Because the water, drywall was damaged by water or there was a fight, right? So you have to allot for repairs. Now, next, you also have to allot for capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are big items, big ticket items, expenditures. So for example, to change the whole roof, that means you could be spending for a single family home. You could be spending anywhere from $25,000 to $35,000, depending on the size, the square footage of your property. But, you know, just be prepared that you have that funds. Second, you may have siding that is bad and you may need to replace it. Right? Or third, capital expenditures for floors they're really bad and you need to change them to luxury vinyl floor planking, LVT or LVP or hardwood floors. This would cost thousands, especially if you have a big square footage. If you have a big square footage, that means it's more pricier, more money. Just be prepared that you'll have minimum of 10,000 in just hardwood floors. So capital expenditures are big ticketed items. They shrink my side, my frame there. So expenses, right? Mortgage, taxes, insurance, repairs, and capital expenditures. And let's not forget, you have your, if you have an LLC, you have your, your CPA, your lawyer, your bookkeeper, so these are just some of the things under the expenses, under this column, expenses. 
Now, how do I buy cash flowing properties? Let's put the tie. How do I buy cash flowing properties? So one, you have the income. Two, we have the expense. Now this income is gross income. And when we subtract it with the expense, we have the income and now it's called net income. Now don't forget, we have debt. We borrowed money from the bank. This is the debt. Debt service is the amount of money you have to pay to your bank for lending you the money. It could be 20 per, it could be 80%, 70%, right? Loan to value. So loan to value 80% from the bank, for example, or 20% from you or Loan to value could be 70% from the bank or 30% from you, from I. Now, once we have the net income and we subtract it from the debt service, now we have what we call cash flow, cash flowing properties. So in order for us to make cash flowing properties, either... We need to be able to, one, increase, increase our income. Two, decrease our expense. Right? So we can get higher net income. And then be able to pay our debt, our bank. So we still have cash flow. Now, what we have to remember that yes, our income, our income went up. Our income went up because why? The rent now is higher. But we also have to consider that our expenses went up, right? So when our rent went up, our expenses went up, we are left with a little of our net income. Now we have to make sure that this little of the net income that's left, we are still able to pay our debt because if the Net income, scenario number one, if the net income is high and you're, you will still have to pay our debt, then we have, we are positive cash flow. Now, if our net income is not so high, 